The cell is just like an apartment. Looking at the diagram of a cell on the left and looking at the diagram of an apartment on the right, it's not difficult to see features that perform similar functions in the cell and that in the apartment. For example, each organelle in the cell resembles a specific room within the apartment with a specific function. The cell membrane would then resemble the apartment walls. Similar to the apartment wall, one of the key functions of the cell membrane include the formation of a barrier which forms the perimeter of the cell keeping things out from the cell. Another function includes material exchange, where certain molecules are allowed entry in and out of the cell where others are not. Finally, a third function where it helps the cell adapts to changes in its size and shape as and when required, particularly during cell movement and cell division. Let's now take a closer look at the cell membrane. Just like many bricks are required to form a wall, the cell membrane is also made up of millions of building blocks called phospholipids. The phospholipid molecule consists of two parts, the hydrophilic head which loves water and the hydrophobic tail which fears water. And it's the millions of phospholipid molecules coming together that form the cell membrane and wraps the cell content within it. Taking note that both the inside and outside of the cell are both aqueous, where water forms the predominant part of the environment. And due to the difference in water affinity between the head and tail portions of the phospholipid molecules, there are only a limited number of ways in which the phospholipid molecules can arrange themselves. The first way shown here would not work, since the organic hydrophobic tail and aqueous hydrophilic head would not come together. The second way would also not work since the hydrophobic tail would not expose themselves to the water environment inside and outside the cell. Hence, the most logical way will be for the hydrophobic tails to tuck themselves in between the hydrophilic heads since the heads would prefer the surrounding aqueous environment. So it's this lining up of two layers of phospholipid molecules that form the cell membrane, which we also call the phospholipid bilayer. And if we view it three-dimensionally, this phospholipid bilayer would form a spherical perimeter giving us the cell membrane we see here. Because these phospholipid molecules are held together by weak forces of attraction, it also gives the cell membrane a very fluid and dynamic structure, where the individual phospholipid molecules are able to slide past one another and move further or nearer to one another as and when needed. This fluid and dynamic structure also imparts certain properties to the cell membrane. Small molecules like gases, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, is able to slip past the tiny gaps between the phospholipid molecules, giving rise to the selective permeability of the cell membrane. The ability of these phospholipid molecules to come apart easily and form spec also gives it great flexibility. For example, when a sharp microneedle penetrates the cell membrane, the phospholipid molecules make way by coming apart, and they will just come together easily to reseal the cell membrane when the needle is removed, keeping things out. Finally, during cell movement or cell division, the cell needs to constantly change its shape and size, and phospholipid molecules can be easily added on to increase its size or removed to decrease its size during such processes. In the next video, we will take a closer look at one of the most important properties of the cell membrane, which is the selective permeability.